five. Later, there were eight one-room school districts. Education has been the hallmark of our town ever since. The schools in Westboro are interesting because, of course, the first educated person in Westboro was Reverend, Reverend Ebenezer Parkman. And he was Harvard educated, and he became the minister and the most learned man in town in 1724. And he continued, I believe, 58 years or more as our town minister. So he had connections with Harvard University and Cambridge, and therefore probably was a man of culture and, and learning that people in Westboro would go to for counsel. Westboro did establish uh, town schools very early on, and what they established were um, basically schools. Their first school person was, uh, I think his name was Mr. Townsend, and he would board out with different farmers for about three months at a time. And schools would be uh, usually a one-room schoolhouse, and uh, he would travel to different parts of the town for three months at a time and, and give schooling. When we established the eight one-room schoolhouses officially in districts, the children who lived in any particular district would go to that one-room schoolhouse. And again, it would be ungraded, grades one through eight, and children would not go all year round. They would go when they were not needed on the farms so that uh, perhaps they would not attend faithfully in harvest time or in spring planting time, but during the winters or off seasons, they would go to school. And the older school um, children would teach the younger school children. Usually there would be one schoolmaster. Again, the schoolmaster would be uh, receiving room and board from particular families. And you could just imagine what it would be like to have your teacher living with you in your home, uh, making sure you did your homework as you got up in the morning. But uh, they also would be paid not very much, but paid enough uh, to survive. The first public high school was built on School Street in 1854. More than 20 subjects were taught at the school, including Greek, astronomy, and surveying. More schools were built as the student population grew. Curtis and Forbes Grammar School, Harvey School, Eli Whitney School, Forbes High School. The list goes on. The old Eli Whitney School building still stands. It is now the YWCA Child Care Center. Over the years, the school system has grown even bigger. Now, we have six schools. Armstrong, Fails, Hastings, Mill Pond, Gibbons Middle School, and High School. From one room school to six schools with modern facilities, our town has changed enormously indeed. In spite of all the changes, Westboro heritage has been kept alive. Historical buildings, houses, memorials, and street signs are everywhere, especially in downtown area. The Rotary 100 feet in diameter has been the town's focal point. The 60 feet high war memorial flagpole, dedicated on November 11, 1931, has a granite base decorated with four brown eagles. The names of the soldiers killed in wars are engraved on the base. Across from the Rotary stands the arcade building where town's second meeting house was located.
The town hall has an interesting story of its own. The meeting house was not finished until 1724, and it was used both for church services and for all public meetings of the town government, because at that time in the 1700s, the town and the church were one. There was only one church, which was congregational, and to be a voting member, you had to be a member of the church as well as a property holder. So town and meeting hall and meeting house in Westboro continued on Powder Hill until people had begun getting tired of walking from uh, downtown Westboro, which had begun to be developed since uh, the early 1700s, out to the Route 9 where the meeting house was. So they decided that they would move the meeting house and build a second meeting house in 1749 right in the middle of town right where the Rotary is now, really at the junction of Milk Street and Main Street. And therefore, in 1749, that was completed. It was a great big wooden structure, wooden meeting house, again used as a church, but did not look like a church because in the Puritan days, you did not have any stained glass, you did not have any uh, paintings or anything that would represent something that could be tied with uh, the old English ways. It was a pure form of religion and, and government. That continued to be our meeting house and town hall until the trains went through in 1834. And you can just imagine what it was like when the trains went through. You couldn't have a town meeting very easily. You couldn't have uh, a church meeting very easily with the train roaring right past you up um, Summer Street across Spring to Milk. So therefore, uh, it was voted to sell the old meeting house to Mr. Chamberlain, and he uh, jacked up that house, at the meeting house, added porches or an arcade, and that big old second meeting house was called the arcade, and because of the covered porches and the stores that were in that building. What's interesting is when that building was taken down, that meeting house was taken down, I believe in the uh, 1890s, the new building that was put up there, the new brick building that was put there, is also called the Arcade. A lot of people have no idea why, because there are no porches there anymore, but it was in a memory of the, that meeting house that had arcade porches. The town hall then was built in 1839, where the present town hall is, which is directly across from Memorial Cemetery on West Main Street. And this turned out to be a wonderful town hall because it had a library in its first floor, it also had the police, and it also was used as a district court in the bottom offices, as well as the other town offices in town. The tax clerk, the tax and the town clerk, various town offices were in this 1839 town hall. Outside of it, when you see the old photographs, there's a, there's a bandstand, a little round bandstand which would have all kinds of concerts during the summer. And in fact, sometimes the Lyman School, the Reform School band would come down and play. There was a Westboro Cornet band. And this, you can just imagine, summer evenings when people would congregate outdoors in front of the town hall to hear the concerts in the bandstand. Another thing that went on in, these, uh, in this wonderful place was movies. There were movies that were silent movies upstairs, and I know a woman named Vesta uh, Tyler played the piano, and then people would come and pay a nickel to see the serial movies every Saturday. Uh, the children particularly, uh, the silent movies that went with cowboys and people being tied to train tracks and all of that. That happened upstairs in town hall. There were minstrel shows. There were temperance, a lot of temperance uh, lectures during the late 1800s, during the temperance movement. I'm sure there were fiery anti-abolitionist, -an uh, anti-slavery talks given there, so that it was a hotbed of social and political activity. High school graduations were there, dances, a great, great many things were held in the West, old West Road Town Hall built. 1839. In 1929, with the help of uh, money from the Forbes family, uh, the new Westboro Town Hall was built, the one that we use currently, and that is a wonderful building, a brick building, it's sort of an art deco. If you go in and you see um, sort of a 1929-1930 architectural style in its own right now, it has a wonderful 
details, historic details that we want to preserve. When that was built, it also housed the police department downstairs, uh, the selectman's office, and all town offices. High school graduations, again, were held upstairs in the main auditorium, and there were various cultural activities in Memorial Hall and the other auditorium stage that were in the West Road Town Hall. built in 1908, financed by private donation. Previously, the library was located on the first floor of the old town hall. An addition was added to the library in 1981. The Heritage Room is dedicated to town's history. In 1830, Charles Parkman organized a volunteer fire company but the town's fire department was officially established in 1842. It was housed in the basement of the old town hall until 1888, when the present fire department building was completed. The Forks Municipal Building is named after Frank and Fanny Forks, the well-known philanthropist. It used to be the Forbes High School. Now, it houses town offices, Westboro Historical Commission, the school administration, and the police department. The first police chief, William Magner, was appointed in 1899. Policemen had no cruisers and used their own or rented cars prior to 1952 when the first police cruiser was purchased. Historical homes are well preserved in Westboro. The William Sibley House at 13 Parkman Street was built in 1844. Mr. Sibley was one of the sleigh makers. The brakes used to build the house were manufactured right here in Westboro. The house now is the home of Westboro Historical Society. This big clock and the one at Westboro Historical Commission hold a special place in our town's history. It is a beautiful clock that has a second hand and a calendar. The interesting thing, and it's cherry wood, has the brass finials. It was made by our own Gardner Parker. He was a clock maker, and uh, Parker's Folly is a street up off um, John Street, West Street, up in that area, behind the St. Stephen's Episcopal Church. And what happened was, up until that time, they used to send to England for the brass works, which you can see through the bonnet. Now, the bonnet is the top of a tall case clock. They're not grandfather clocks. Gardner Parker also made a clock for the town meeting house. And Gardner Parker's clock in our town meeting, uh, meeting house is now in the Smithsonian Institute. And in fact, it's not only in the Smithsonian Institute, it is the first and major exhibit in the on-time exhibit at the Smithsonian. So uh, 
when I went to Washington, I made a beeline to the Smithsonian, and sure enough, the first thing I saw was this wonderful, huge mechanism of a tower clock built by Gardner Parker for the Westboro Meeting House. Uh, and it is really the highlight of that exhibit. And I'm proud to say that Westboro is well represented in the nat nation's capital and in the American History Museum with our clock from our meeting house. Now, back to the Sibley House. The house itself has become a local history museum. Each year, fourth graders visit the house, learning about town's history as part of their social studies program at school. thought to belong to Betsy Fay wheel winder. It was used for winding um, yarn to get a skein or if you had to do a sweater which was more than a skein you could you go around and when it goes around and the wheel clicks or that piece falls down that would be 40 yards. These are collections of autograph, and one of them reads, May you have a happy and useful life in your years of strife. Your friend, Mabel Brew.